Hello everyone, welcome to Dinesh QL. My name is Dinesh Priyankara, Data Platform MVP and Business Intelligence Architect. I have already published a video on always encrypted feature and this is my second one on it. With this video, I am going to show you the way of configuring always encrypted to work with multiple applications using Windows Certificate Store and Azure Key Vault. Here are the things I have added to this video. Let's talk about little bit on column master key because it's the main key for making our encrypted data available for multiple application. Then I'll show you where we can store column master keys. I have added two demonstration for this video. One for showing how to use Windows Certificate Store as the key store and the second one for showing how to use Azure Key Vault as the store. If you are new to always encrypted and want to know the basic of it, watch my previous video on this. You can learn what is always encrypted, how it works, how it should be configured and how we can access encrypted data using Management Studio and .NET application. Okay, let's talk about column master key. So it's a key protecting key that protects our column encryption key. You know that column encryption key is used for encrypting our data. Whenever we configure our database or the data table for always encrypted, it uses column encryption key for encrypting our data. Column encryption key is protected or encrypted using column master key and column encryption key is stored in the database but our column master key is stored outside the SQL Server database. It stores only metadata related to column master key. There are two uh, locations or the two containers that can be used for storing column master key. One is local key store, other one is centralized key store. What you have to make sure is your application can access this store for encrypting and decrypting data. Let's see how local and centralized key store works. Assume that we have a database which is encrypted using always encrypted feature and we have an application hosted in one of the server. So application needs to access this encrypted data but it will not be able to access it because it has no access to SMK. So all we have to do is we need to add SMK to this machine. If this machine or this server has SMK, application can use it for accessing encrypted data. So that's how local key store works. And if there's another application hosted in another machine, all we need to make sure is SMK is deployed in that machine. So in that case, application can access the SMK and access encrypted data. So likewise, you can maintain multiple local key stores for accessing data. But if you have more and more application hosted in different servers, different machines, the cost related to maintenance and management, it, it goes up. So if you have multiple applications, it is always better to have centralized key store for maintaining or uh, holding SMK. Okay, let's, let's talk about centralized key store. So we have the database which is encrypted using always encrypted and we have our SMK hosted or deployed to a central location. And we have an application that needs to access data in the encrypted database. All it needs is, all we have to do is, we need to make sure this application can access this SMK. If the application can access the SMK, then it can simply access data. So we don't need to deploy the SMK to this server. So likewise, if you have multiple servers that hold multiple applications, if application can access the SMK, then application can simply read data. So that's how it works. So when it comes to local key store, we have to use Windows Certificate Store. There are two types of uh, Certificate Store, Local Machine Certificate Store and Current User Certificate Store. If the SMK is deployed to local machine certificate store, multiple users or you know more, more than one user can access this SMK. But if the SMK is stored in current user certificate store, only that user can access the SMK. If you are planning for uh, holding the SMK centrally, you have to use Azure Key Vault. Then application can connect with your Azure Key Vault and read the SMK for accessing encrypted data. Let's understand the way of adding SMK to local key store. First, you need to export the certificate which is in your Windows certificate store. You need to make sure that you have included the private key too. 
then you need to transfer the exported certificate to the new server that hosts your new application. Once transferred, import the certificate to either current user Windows certificate store or machine Windows certificate store. If you have imported to current user Windows certificate store, only the user account you have used can access data. But if you have imported to machine Windows certificate store, then all users can access the data as long as they have read permission for the certificate. Let's see how we can use Azure Key Vault for SMK. First of all, you have to create an Azure Key Vault using Windows PowerShell. There's no GUI available for this, hence you have to use Windows PowerShell. If you have not installed Azure RM, you need to install and import it before creating the Key Vault. Next, you need to create an app registration in your Azure Active Directory. Once created, note the application ID because you have to use it with your application. In addition to that, you have to create a key for your app registration and you need to note it down too because when you make your application you have to use the application ID as the client ID and the key as a secret. Since you will be adding SMK to your key vault during always encrypted wizard you need to make sure that you or whoever runs the wizard has permission on this vault. Therefore grant permission to required user account or you can call it as principal for operations such as create, get, wrap key and unwrap key. Then you need to grant permission to your application, means app registration you have just created. It needs permission on operations mentioned in this slide. After that, you can run Always Encrypted Wizard and use Azure Key Vault as the centralized key store for SMK. Once everything is done, you can have your application, example .NET application, registered to Azure Key Vault using app registration ID and its key. You need to make sure that you have installed mentioned packages for accessing Azure Key Vault. In addition to that, make sure you have added column encryption setting equal enable to your connection string. Time for demonstration. Let me show you how to export a certificate and import to another machine allowing access to encrypted data. Then I will show you how to create an Azure Key Vault, use it for storing the SMK and configuring a .NET application to access encrypted data. Let me use the same sales database I created uh, for my previous video. This sales database has a table called message and I have enabled always encrypted on this message table. Since I ran the always encrypted wizard in my machine, SMK has been created and stored in my machine. Because of that, I can read encrypted content. Let me execute a select statement and see. When I execute, I can see all values. Message code and message columns are encrypted, but I can see values for message code and message because I have the SMK with me. Let me try to access sales database using another machine. As you see, I have logged into virtual machine hosted in Azure and I have connected to sales database. I have opened a query window with an additional parameter to make sure that I can execute statement against my encrypted table. Let me show you the parameter I have used. If I click on option and go to additional connection parameters, you can see I have used column encryption settings equal enable in order to connect with my sales database. Let me execute a select statement against my message table and see. When I execute it, I get an error because this machine has no SMK in the certificate store. If I want to make sure that I can read encrypted data, when I execute queries in this machine, I need to get a copy of the SMK into this machine. Let me go into my machine. I'm going to open the certificate store and get the certificate exported. I have to open the current user certificate store instead of machine certificate store as my SMK has been saved in my certificate store. Let me open it, expand personal and click certificates. I can see the certificate created for SMK. This is how you have to export it. Right click on it, all task and you can see the menu item export. Click on it, wizard starts, click on next. You need to make sure you include the private key. So the first option has to be selected. Click on next, leave the default selected. Click on next and set a password for your private key. And then click on next. I'm going to store my certificate in this folder 
and so let me copy the path and go back to this paste the path and this is the file name click on next everything is okay let me click on finish to export it if I go to folder now I can see the certificate has been exported I can copy this file and transfer it to my virtual machine and then import this certificate into virtual machine certificate store I'm in my virtual machine now as you see I have copied the certificate to my virtual machine and I have opened my certificate store let me import the certificate into my certificate store I can right click on personal note all task and select import then the wizard starts click on next let me click on browse and go to the folder and select the file and click on next it, it needs the password we set and then click on next click on next again and and click on finish to complete the import process now if I go to personal folder then certificates folder I can see the certificate imported if I go back to my management studio and execute the select statement against message table I should see records I can clearly see encrypted data in plain text because this machine has SMK now just like this if you have more applications in different machines you need to import the certificate to certificate store of those machines remember if you import the certificates to machine certificate store instead of current user certificate store you need to grant read permission to each user on the certificate okay now let's see how we can use Azure Key Vault as a centralized key store I'm going to use a new database for that which is called marketing and I'm going to create the same table in marketing database let me select create table statement and execute table is created and then let me insert a record and see it our table is ready so I'm going to make message code and message columns as encrypted columns first step is creating Azure Key Vault for that we have to use PowerShell I'm going to use PowerShell ISC so let me open PowerShell ISC as an administrator now if I have not installed Azure RM module I need to install it so this is the command for installing Azure RM module since I have ins I have already installed I'm not going to run it once it is installed you need to import it here is the command for importing it once it is imported you are ready for executing related commands let me log into my Azure account so here's the command for logging I have to enter my user ID and password okay I have logged into my Azure account I can see my subscription subscription ID and the tenant ID here's the command for creating new Azure key vault I have to pass the name for the vault and the resource group and the location if you have not created the resource group you need to make sure you have created the resource group before creating the Azure Key Vault. Let me execute it and see. Azure Key Vault is created. Next step is adding an app registration to Azure Active Directory. I have logged into my Azure account and open Azure Active Directory Blade. Let me click on app registration and then I can click on new application registration. Let me give a name and the URL and click on create to get it created registration is done if I click on this I can see the application ID so I need to make sure I have copied the application ID for adding this to my .NET application and then I need to create a key too so let me click on keys and create a new one and so I'm going to name it as database app key and the duration I'm going to set it for one year and once I save it it will generate a value for me so that's going to be the secret for this database app we have to copy this key before closing this blade as Azure does not allow us to see the key again once this is closed 
now we need to add permission to user and application on Azure Key Vault. Here is the command for adding permission to user. As you see, it needs vault name, resource group name, permission set, and the user principal name. In order to get the user principal name, you need to execute command like Azure AD user. However, if you have not installed Azure AD preview, you need to make sure you install Azure AD preview before trying with get user. Since I have already installed Azure AD preview, I'm not going to execute it. But I'm going to connect with my Azure Active Directory now. Here's the command for connecting with Azure Active Directory. I'm passing tenant ID, then it makes sure that I connect with the correct subscription. It needs my use ID and password again. Let me enter. Now I have connected with my Active Directory. Let me get the user ID. This is the user principal name I have to use when I'm adding permission on Azure Key Vault. Let me copy that. And use with the command. Here's the command. As you see, I'm passing the vault name as SQL AE Key Vault and then the resource group name and the permission. So I'll be adding permissions like create, get, wrap key, unwrap key, sign, verify list to my principal name. Let me execute it. Now I can run the always encrypted wizard using this account and use Azure Key Vault as my key store. Next is adding permission to the app registration we did. Here's the command again. So I'm going to use the same command and same vault name, resource group name. And this time, instead of passing user principal name, I'll be passing service principal name. That is actually the application ID related to the app registration we did. And then the permission set. You can see I'm giving permissions like get, wrap key, unwrap key, sign, verify list, but I have not added create. Why? Because this will be used with the .NET application and it is not going to create or add any keys to Azure Key Vault. It will just use it. Let me execute this and see. Done. Now let's go to Management Studio and run Always Encrypted Wizard. Let me refresh tables nodes in my marketing database then I can see my message table. I'm going to right click on message table and start the wizard by clicking encrypt columns. So I get the first page. Let me click on next to see the second page. And I'm going to select two columns, message code and message. So I'll be selecting deterministic for message code and then randomize for message. Let me click on next. Here's the page for selecting Azure Key Vault. Last time we selected Win Windows Certificate Store as our key store, but this time we're going to select Azure Key Vault and when I click on it, it shows me a window which I can use for signing to my Azure account. I signed in. Now I can see all my subscription with the first drop down. If I select the correct subscription, I can see the key vault I, I just created using PowerShell. Let me select it and click on next. And I didn't want to save the script, so let me select the second option and click on Next. Everything looks OK. I'm going to click on Finish to complete the process. Wizard completed. Now my message table is encrypted. Let's access the message table using a .NET application. I'm going to use the same .NET application which I used with my previous video. With my previous video, I use SMK stored in Certificate Store, but this time I'm going to use SMK stored in Azure Key Vault. There are a couple of things you need to check before adding related codes to your application. One is the .NET Framework. You need to make sure .NET Framework is set for 4.6. 
if I expand this, I can see all .NET Framework. So make sure you have selected 4.6 or later. Next is installing two mentioned packages to this application. So you can open Package Manager Console by clicking Tools, Manager and the Console. You need to install Azure Key Vault Provider first. Once it is successfully installed, you need to install Active Directory. Once these two are installed, you can access properties and methods related to Azure Key Vault. Let's go to the code and see. You can see I have added two namespaces based on the packages we install. As you see, I have added one property called client credential based on client credential class and two methods. One is initialize Azure Key Vault Provider and the second one is get token. I instantiate client credential inside initialize Azure Key Vault Provider by passing application ID and a secret. And then when the application is getting initialized, I call initialize Azure Key Vault Provider. Rest is same as the previous video. If I scroll down, you can see two methods, one for inserting records and one for getting records. These two methods are based on two stored procedures added to the marketing database. One is add message that inserts records, another one is get message that returns message based on the message code we pass. And just like the previous time, I have added an additional setting to my connection string, which is column encryption setting equal enable. Let's run this application and see. If I enter a code related to message and click on gate, I should see the message. I can see the message, which means my application can access Azure Key Vault for getting the SMK and it can be used for encrypting and decrypting records coming from my message table. Now you know how to make CMK related to always encrypted tables available for multiple applications. If you need the code related to this video, Please refer my blog. I have added a comment to this video that shows a URL for the blog post. Thanks for watching.